Welcome, everybody. Glad you could come all the way from that room. <laughs> Right I've never seen a bigger class of 920 ever. A room in here, and I'm like, where is Chaz? I don't see the teacher because of the students. Um, my name is Manu, and um, you didn't come here for me. You came here for this man right here. Um, so we're going to do a little Q&A. I'm going to start us off, though, um, because uh, let me sit, sit my butt down. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaz Young. Right?
pretty good. Could have had a tap dancing partner. And we went to see the famous movie Starry Weather, and who was in there? Uh, the Nicholas Brothers. <laughs> so we went crazy about the Nicholas Brothers, flipping and splitting all over the place. Anyway, uh, my father got in touch with me, Frankie Manning, and took me to meet Norma Miller. <laughs> and she was she wanted some more boys for she was forming a, a, another dance group. And um, Frankie introduced me to her, and first thing Norma said, I didn't even know you had a son. Norma I was 17. I was 17 years old. And of course, I fell right in with the steps that they were doing, because in Mary Bruce, she, she was known for swing dancing, jazz dancing. Not a whole lot of tap. It, it did tap, but mostly swing type of jazz steps. So I fell right in, and um, uh, I started dancing with Norman Miller dancers, and uh, we opened up at the Apollo Theater. That was my debut. I made work there with the, I think it was four boys and four girls. So that became my uh, debut. I made that, and then we started dancing all over the United States. Then we went to Caracas, Venezuela. I celebrated my 18th birthday in Caracas, Venezuela. Hmm. Kept on dancing, and he's showing me a picture. <laughs> is, uh, that, is that this time? Is this is time? later, okay. much later. Uh, Norma had uh, left New York. Anyway, we, I danced. Well, let's get there later. Okay. <laughs> In other words, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we traveled, did a lot of traveling all over the United States and, and abroad. And uh, it got very expensive to take the girls of, uh, along because of the costumes and everything. So Norma decided <laughs> to form an act with Norma Miller and the four jazz men. Mm -hmm. And we were the jazz dancers, four guys. So uh, we started going on. To, uh, all of this lasted 14 years with the Norma Miller and the dancers into the act, Norma Miller and the four jazz men, and up until 1964. Now this, we were in Australia. We did our last eight weeks. When we came back to New York City, there were no more gigs. So lots of changes. Uh, uh, no more jobs. So now what the heck am I going to do? So I, first thing job I could get is I started driving a cab. <laughs> did you really? I, so yeah, I did. Did you go in New York? I had to make some money. Right I, had there, to right. it. I had to wow. I had a family, so I had to get out there and make some bucks. <coughs> so, uh, that's a big difference. Yeah, well, yeah, I did that. And then um, I started teaching on weekends with, the, with Debbie Williams' mother's Austin dancers. And uh, uh, Norma went away and she came back and she formed another. No look at uh, Savoy dances, and we would travel all over into the schools uh, and teaching the youngsters the uh, uh, how Lindy Hopper was born. T talked about the uh, Charles Lindbergh and the, and how it's got Lindy Hopper got his name the Lindy Hop from Charles Lindbergh. So uh, it's just been a, a wonderful journey and uh, traveling to uh, uh, Sweden for the last 21 years. My dad and I, we did 19 years old together, wow. but uh, I, I continue on to go to teaching in, uh, in this place called Harang. Have anybody heard of it? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it's funny you say that, because the first year I went to Harang, I was, I was one of the flight attendants asked me, well, well, where are you going? Maybe it was trying to check up on me, I don't know. They're like, where are you going? Well, I'm going to Harang. She said, where? And she was Swedish. <laughs> Jazz is talking about the camp. The, the, the town's name is Harang. It's taken over, if you don't know about it. Uh, for five weeks now, in July. Yes, okay. yes um, into August, the first week of August. Right, July to August. And it's, taken over by Lindy Hopper's all over the world. 
-hmm. And Chaz is one of the, the, the <coughs> premier teachers there. It's the um, world's largest international dance camp. And it's wonderful. Like you said, people come from all over the world. Uh, I mean, Israel, Russia, and for the one common purpose to, to dance. And it's, it's fantastic. They may not speak the language, but when they get out there, they are dancing and enjoying themselves. We have a young lady back there, one of the ambassadors. She was there with her last year. Yes. Yes, uh, the Frankie Manning Foundation is, is, is a foundation that is keeping Lindy Hop alive and is taking it to uh, various places where people don't know. So when we spoke of uh, Tracy, like being an ambassador, uh, we take these people, and we took Tracy and invited her to Harang, and we spent four weeks, three weeks, I was there for two weeks. Two weeks, mm -hmm. and she two out of the five. The Lindy Hop, where she can take it back to her community, and so that the dance can still continue to spread. And I just think that's a wonderful part of what the foundation is doing. And not only here in, in like in Oakland, but it's being done. We had uh, this year we had um, from uh, from Africa. We had a dancer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I yeah. Mo from Mozambique. Uh, they picked him, hand picked this, this young fella, and had him come to Lorraine and spent four weeks. So now he's taking that back to Mozambique so that they can swim dance in, in Africa. How about that? That's fun. Yes, yes. <laughs> Same thing in Asia. A young fella there was from. Uh, uh, Taipei, I believe, Taiwan, yes. And uh, he, he goes back to, to his community and to keep the dance, uh, uh, to teach different people from all over the world. Brazil, I mean, now their dance is the samba. Their music is great, but they are swinging in Brazil. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> and, and this all relates to your, your father's uh, legacy and, and dream to have uh, Lindy Hop exactly. all, all over the world. Um, so the foundation uh, is really wonderful. It reaches out to all these different uh, different uh, communities that you probably have never seen it. Or maybe they have one person that's seen it. Yes. And so, uh, yeah. And this is what they're introducing, introducing the dance because it was one of the greatest dances back in the early 30, 1939 or even earlier. And and uh, it was big back in those days, and of course it died down, but uh, uh, they were showing films. This is how come the resurgence of the Lindy Hop came back. And um, people in London, the, the giant and Lindy Hopper, and the people in Sweden, they were watching these old films, and they had this young fella, not a young fella, but uh, Al Men. <laughs> He was teaching the Swedes how to lend off. Well, unfortunately, he died. So they want to look around for who's the next person in line that they can find to bring out to learn this dance. So, of course, that meant they found my dad, Frankie Manning, and they started bringing him out. And then, consequently, they brought me out. <laughs> so I started, they wanted to learn tap. At the time, I was doing a lot of teaching tap. So. I, I started to teach the Vida Machos, they started them in tap. So it's the keeping the dance uh, to spread all, every part where there is a dance. <laughs> we talked a little about your, about your tap uh, career, because you, you uh, obviously you swing and uh, uh, tap, and uh, you're an amazing tap dancer, and who are like your who were like your, your, the people you looked up at when you uh, were coming up? Well, I, I want to say it like this, like, um, back in the day, like when I was saying, like in the 50s, um, if I didn't go to the Apollo Theater in New York City and all, um, I went to the movies. The movie, in the movies that I see, Gene Kelly, Curtis Stair, 
and the Nicholas Brothers. So they were, I, I went to the movies to learn. I, I went, I mean, I couldn't afford to go to classes, but I started again back in with Mary Bruce. I started tap there, and uh, they even had a partner, and we called ourselves Hot Sauce and Ketchup. <laughs> Back in those days, they had names, catchy little names, uh, uh, Oaken, Oaken, uh, Coles and Atkins, and so we were hot sauce and ketchup. So, I mean, I, 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 I oh, this is funny. I was ketchup. And then my dad used to say, yeah, because you always looked like you was trying to catch up. I mean, as you know, back in the day, there were lots and lots of tap dancers, and I, I picked it up, and I, I started teaching now. I, I, I teach youngsters uh, in Las Vegas, where I live, and we run the Austin Dance Academy, and uh, that is I, I, what I hand it down to uh, the youth now, and so that they can carry on. They have some fantastic young dance, tap dancers today, say, young lover. Jason Samuels, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just wonderful, and the dance must not die, it must continue to live, so you pass it on. That is, um, so it just speaks to something that I've always thought about, it was amazing, is that when you were coming up, you said you went into the movie theater, and you watched the dance, you had to, that was your way of learning. You didn't have a videotape. You didn't no, have a, there was no such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no rewind. No rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know teach uh, you know Rob Van Arn who used to teach out in out in uh, the out here. Yeah. Um, he would always talk about or Sylvia, Sylvia Sykes. They would yeah. talk about they stayed up till three in the morning to watch a thirty second clip of whatever, and then have to write it down or whatever. Well, you think the kids got it a little better? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they can rewind, rewind, rewind. <laughs> yeah, the technology today is is so much different and uh, so much more and that advantageous for you to learn. So um, yeah, just keep on getting up. No, it's just, it's Is there one movie we just watched over and over again trying to like was there one that you watched like one another trying to get? Well, like say, we go back to the Jive and Lindy Hoppers. Mm -hmm. They would get a film clip of like, uh, you, I know you, some of you have seen it. Who was it? Uh, Day of the Races. Day of the Races and uh, it's also popping. Well, yeah, you see that fantastic uh, footage of the Lindy Hoppers. One of the best. And so people wanted to, if you want to learn, I was back in the day, I was it is to, but put it on and then slow it down. No. <laughs> learn how they, they do it, if that's how you want to learn it. And uh, the Jive and Lindy Hoppers, they watched and watched and watched and learned. And, uh, and they, they, were, they were dynamite back in the day because uh, um, um, I, I, I say the Jive and the Hoppers because Jive and the Hoppers and the Rhythm Hot Shot, they started about the same time. It is just that the Cat Club was one of the clubs that started lending and people started coming from all over because that was a hot club. The Cat Club in Harlem. No, the, the, the no. Cat Club on 13th Street, Manhattan. Okay. Yes. Downtown. Downtown, yes. Okay. Uh, this was in like 1989, I'm not even talking about the Savoy, Savoy closed in 1958. Well, let me see. I have so, so we saw the, the, the subject of this photo here, this picture. That I, <laughs> I don't know if we could pass this around, but I, I want it back because I want Chaz to sign it. Pass this around to Chaz. What, what is? Yeah, well, uh, when Norma had, we, in 1964, we abandoned the act called Norma Miller and the Four Jasmine. Norma went on to be a comedian. 
She went out to the West Coast and I stayed back until I was driving cab. So I didn't see Norma for I guess about maybe another 10 years or so. And she came back to New York and we formed the Savoy Swingers. Okay. So this is the Savoy Swingers. So, cause see, I, I learned, a normal life, cause Norma came out of the Savoy. So I, that's where I started learning how to lindy and how to swing. And I, all, I learned this from, uh, from Norma Miller. And this, this, this picture uh, shows me uh, doing, the, doing the lindy hop with um, uh, my dancing partner, Debbie Williams. And this is Clyde who came, he was down to my birthday party in New York with Amani. Oh, really? Yes. 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 And this is Stoney, uh, passed away, but uh, with uh, Gil, what's that name? I can't think of it either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this brings back, this is a good picture. I haven't seen this picture. Oh, yeah. Not this one, no. no you gotta, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> the only two happy this time. Pass this around. Do you want to take a look at it? Start over here. Um, do we have any questions? I have lots of questions, but I don't want to, I don't want to hog it all. Yes, sir. So, so who are some of your, your favorite bands to dance to that? Oh, well. I I had heard an awful lot about Count Basie. That's when I had just started dancing. My father talked about him and Norma talked about him. And then we had the wonderful experience of appearing at the Apollo Theater with the great Count Basie mm -hmm. band. Mm -hmm. Then I started to learn exactly what they were talking about. <laughs> And we worked with Count Basie quite often. We did many jobs on uh, 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 with the Count Basie because see, Count Basie used to play play up at the Savoy Ballroom, and Norma Miller was up at the Savoy. So Count Basie knew what Norma was doing, and of course now I'm a part of Norma Miller uh, uh, dances. So uh, listening to that band, and then uh, of course I had to. The wonderful pleasure not only dancing with the Count Basie band, Duke Ellington band. And I, I'm telling you, every every musician in those bands were giants in their own right. I mean, from trombone play, he can get up and do a whole show by himself. I mean, this, this, they were great, great musicians. So. Those are the two my favorite. Mm -hmm. But of course I did a Benny Goodman. I mean, I'm, they, they ain't no slouch, you know. What I'm just <laughs> <laughs> saying that I had my experience, my actual experience was with the Count Basie. I never worked with Benny Goodman, but I loved his music. Then Miller and you know, all, yeah. Right back there. Oh, um, I'm interested to hear that as a child you went to a dance school and learned how to lindy hop because I feel like there's a, most of the stories I've heard is that everything was learned on the dance floor and that there weren't any lessons and nobody counted the music. So what were those lessons like when you were a kid at the Mary Bruce School? Well, at Mary Bruce, she just wanted us to know the basic eight count lindy. And that's just about all we did. That I, and I remember that. I remember that because she would cut out one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight, and that's all we did. I don't remember even doing a tuck turn. But, <laughs> but she wanted us to know the basic social uh, aspect of the Lindy Hop. We didn't go any further, not in the Mary Bruce Nancy School. That's what I remember learning. Which is, which is interesting because when you spoke about the Jive and Lindy Hoppers and the Rhythm Hot Shots, they were forced to watch all the performance stuff. And then when it came to social dancing, they had to go get Frankie and Chaz to learn that aspect of it. So it's kind of a different approach. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, when you're a performer, when you are performing on stage in Lindy Hopper, I mean, you are selling, you are performing for your audience. 
and social dancing is just social dancing and you enjoy each other uh, on the dance floor. So uh, it's a whole different uh, atmosphere. You, on stage, you get out there, you, to be enter you want to entertain uh, the people who pay their money to come to see you. So that was, that's a big difference. Uh, I, I love the jam sessions that, uh, uh, that you go, you, that you've experienced that you, when they form the circle. Uh, I mean, that's a performance, you know, that is not social dancing. <laughs> Girls flying every which way, it's just fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> you can be cooking, yes! Over the time of your life, you've talked about social dancing and you've talked about dancing as working gigs. How often did you dance? How many nights a week? And was it more in certain times of your life than others? Um, after 1964, um, it, 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 things that were changed in, in my life. Um, I told you that I went to, I started driving the cab. I'm talking about for me now, other dancers perhaps, they, they went on became solo uh, performers. I didn't, I just, just started doing, wanted to go to work right away. So I had, because I had kids and I was, I was married, and that's what I thought about, just providing for my family. So, but I did start to teach. It was an old friend, friend from the dancing school that my wife knew, and this, they were looking for a tech teacher. So, <laughs> I started teaching tap, and uh, I've been teaching tap for 40 years now. So uh, uh, that's what that's what happened. Um, I did no longer uh, the time in 1964. We we stayed in, in Australia for eight weeks. We would go to London for nine months. We would go to, to Australia in 1954, and I stayed all of 1955. My son was born January 29th, no December 29th. I went, I left for Australia, and I didn't come back to it a year later. I, I mean, what can I say that that's what happened, and uh, I, I, went, I went abroad, and I stayed that, that length of time. My son looked at me when I came back, he was standing walking, and looked at me awfully strange. But he was at my 80th birthday, and it made me feel very good yesterday, uh, month Sunday. Do any of your kids or grandkids dance? Well, yes, they all dance when I was living in New York because I have four, four kids and they all got a taste of the stage because I was their teacher. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that, we would put on an annual show, it's like a recital, and I would take them to dancing school with me and I would teach them, and then when the show came, I put them on stage. So that's the only experience I had that they had was uh, the, when the recital came, they did their little, their little tap dance. All four of them had that opportunity to be on stage, yes. In your life, it sounds like you've had periods where you danced a lot, and then you didn't dance a lot, and then danced a lot. What was the, like, the health and kind of well-being effect that you experienced with that? Well, I, it was, that was when I, uh, my dad called me and said, because my dad, when he stopped dancing, he went to the post office. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He called me and said, hey, they're giving out the application for the post office. I was driving the cab. If you, I think you, you should try to take it, and then that way uh, you can do, have good health insurance. So, <laughs> <laughs> So I went into the post office. I went into the post office also. But the wonderful thing about the post office, it had three tours. The morning tour, late afternoon, and the midnight. Guess which one I took? The midnight. I guess something I never in life thought I could ever do and work the dead man ship. But, it's, I got up at 8 o'clock in the morning, went home, went to bed, Kids get out of school at 3 o'clock, and I taught from like 3 to about uh, 7. I made all kinds of money. 
<laughs> but when I said that to say, it, it kept me in contact with what I love to do. I had loved to teach, and I, I, and I was teaching kids for a long time. I didn't just, just start it because uh, uh, what, they gave me the opportunity to continue to teach. So I've been teaching TAP for many, many years, and in the last, I uh, started teaching lending uh, about four years ago. Actually, if I go on a job, I can teach TAP or I can teach lending. Yes. Tracy. I am so amazed at you being 80 years old and how you can just I'll tell you what, I'm amazed dead. too. <laughs> yourself dancing. I know your father danced until he was 94, 94, 95, before he passed away at 95. But is it something in your genes? Do you go to the something gym? Do you go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to admit it's got to be something in my genes because I don't go to the gym. <laughs> I don't go to the gym as much as I should. <laughs> do you do anything like you do yoga? <laughs> Competition between two of you. See, 
who was the biggest Pam on stage? Yeah. <laughs> no, like the same person. You know. Yeah, my daddy, he, 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 was, he had lots of personality. They, you know, when it wasn't about that. It was just, we just enjoyed being around each other. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed uh, performing, dancing, going to the movies, going to parties, <laughs> restaurants. I mean, you name it, that's what we, that's what we had going. It was, it, it just, that's the kind of person he was. But, uh, uh, and funny, yeah, I mean, it, uh, We've been cracking out of each other. So yeah, I, 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 I've always dreamed about being in on the session when you guys choreograph that piece. Well, well, like, that, 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 that was Frankie Jim. Yeah, 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 Frankie did it. Oh, uh, okay. Say, come on, let's do this and put, let's put this here, here and maybe do that. And it, it was, I mean, during the course of the dance, we'd be out there wailing, but uh, he, like, he was starting to say, Cool breeze, and I just look at him. And I mean, his heart and soul was in that dance, and I mean, we we did it, and we really enjoyed doing that dance for the people because this is this is how Frankie was, and this is how I learned to be. Like what I mean by that, like at the Apollo Theater, we did four shows a day. The first show was say around 11:30. It was only maybe about oh maybe 20 people in a whole theater, sitting out there. Well, I conditioned myself, my first show was like my fourth show, when it was, when it was packed. And I was taught that you don't know, out of those 20 people, who is in that 20, right. they may be able to put us some way. So that, I went out there with that, that note in my heart, and I went out there and danced my off. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Are there any teachers or performers today that you really appreciate or, I guess, in a way, look up to? Aww. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anybody have taken a class from me? Yeah. I know, I know. Okay, he's, he started after me, but... <laughs> Tried to write down the moves you were trying to teach us. It was at a, it was at a, it was at a workshop weekend, and we like, Jazz Young, of course, we got to be there. Whatever he does, we, he'll, we'll do. And I, I was so mind boggled. Like I think we did the like, like the course. Yes, 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 yes. And I just was like, I, I'm never gonna be able to do this. <laughs> I still have a piece of paper. <laughs> I still can't do it. <laughs>
He took every minute of, of time in his class and teaching. That's one of the details that he did. He, he, and he was that type of a person. He respected women, and on the dance floor, he treated a woman just like a queen. In fact, he used that term many, yeah. many times with those back in the day. He said, she is your queen for your dance duration of the, of the music. And uh, he would show you, and this is where this style came from, when he, when you bow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's Frankie's move. Yeah. And, I, that's what I, and, I, and, I, and this is what I do when I teach the Bendy because I look around and watch a lot of the dancers, and they would just, you know, <laughs> and, and because they've gotten away, if this naturally looks better, this, this is where it comes from. It comes from Frankie. It's, it's the style. And, uh, and, and you should have some style when you dance. <laughs> That's what I, don't you think so? <laughs> Makes women. He said, if you bow to, if you bow to, bow to your queen, then he gets up and he says, look what she does for you. And then, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Quiet lady, 
but she loved to go on the dance floor. Um, what's one of your favorite things to hear out of uh, music you're dancing to? Excuse me? What's one of your favorite things to hear out of a piece of music you're dancing to? Is there a specific like uh, instrument? Meaning? No, just like in general, like is there like a particular feel in music, like really hard and driving or? Well, like say the end of say the end of Shiny Stockings, the music she just mentioned. It's 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 it's, 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 it's driving all right. And, uh, and and it, it it builds up and, and it builds up in, in, in your in your soul and you just want to let loose along with what the music is doing. I mean, if you if you're the type of person the music is cooking, finishing like shiny stockings, and you just dancing like this, <laughs> the music is blasting, and you just dancing like this, but well, you don't feel nothing. You know, so, but if, if you out there, yeah, the music, oh my goodness, it's all in the body. You just, it, 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 you just bounce, you just, your ears wiggle, oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> Answer the question because I feel as though if you answer the question, that'll 
bring more out of them. And and just have patience. Because everybody does not learn at the same pace. Amen. <laughs> so so we gotta wrap this up. But Chaz, on your 80th birthday, I would say happy birthday, first of all. And is there any parting wisdom you want to give to your your constituents? <laughs> Dancing makes you live a long life. I wish everyone a long life. <laughs> <laughs>